gentlemen, introducing the pound for pound best radio show around the world. It's Leave It In The Ring. But the real fight fans, I'm talking about if you're tuning in and listening and leaving in the ring right now, you're a real fight fan, okay? Because this is what hardcore fight fans do. We all want to talk about boxing consistently. It's, it's a 24-hour thing. It's not a sport to us. It's a lifestyle. We got uh, a lot of people coming through. You know, one of the uh, flyweight showdowns, unification bouts that everybody's talking about and everybody is stoked up about, I know I am. I'm excited about this fight. We got two of the participators calling in. We got Giovanni Suliga and Ivan Caldron. They're going to be calling in to talk to us a little bit about this matchup and why we should be excited. You know, since we didn't get the Floyd, well, let me, I'm not going to say it, the a and fight, the X and Y don't fight, say it. They don't say we're, uh, it. we're getting a smaller version. This is a great matchup. You know, uh, Calderon is you know, up on age and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's funny. He got dropped on his last fight on the second round, but did come back up to uh, outbox his opponent. And, uh, you know, so that slickness, you could kind of say it is kind of going away, but it could be because of the not having enough time generalship in the ring. You know, he, he's only been in the ring, I don't know, he's only compelled, I believe it, it, it's only, if I remember correctly, 20 rounds. He's been active in the ring, you know, since uh, prior to uh, being dropped. His last other fights with Karras and with uh, Raul have all been stopped due to a headbutt and cut. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, there's been some inactivity there. I mean, he had that last fight, you know, with the 12 rounds, uh, but he had some start and stops there. And it, it just, the wheels are getting a little rusty. You know, he's 35, which is it was pretty old, you know, it's pretty ancient for a guy his size, 105 to 108. I, I don't really see, you know, there's some drop-off, but he's also kind of, he's so skilled, Calderon, that he's able to move and kind of be a matador and move just enough, like a master. You know, he, he understands uh, his limitations, I think. But Segura is, is that relentless dude that's going to just keep coming. He's that guy that doesn't you know? know his limitations. It's almost like, yeah, he doesn't know any better. You know what I mean? He's just like, I'm going to go in there. I don't care how skilled this other guy is. I'm just going to go in there and kill him, you know? And uh, I like that, man. You know? Oh, <laughs> it's yeah, I do, really too. It's an exciting you know, fight. El, El Guerrero Azteca, he's compelled 24 wins, one, uh, one loss, one draw, 20 KOs. Uh, you know, uh, the guy, uh, last time he lost was the damage decision to Cesar um, Kinchella, who he was able to redeem himself. He was able to knock out uh, Cesar in four rounds, eight months later. You know, and then uh, after that, it's all been, you know, KOs, TKOs here, left and right. So this is the, the similarities that both of these guys are having, you know, uh, Giovanni and, and uh, uh, Calderon. They both have not been really active. Both guys have really had short bouts, not going past four. Both guys have a lot of questions to answer when they face each other because this is what you call elite after the elite, the best versus the best. You know, Giovanni could have easily went after Rodell. He could have easily went after Edgar Sosa. He could have easily went after Brian the Hawaiian Punch Valerio, Lisa Solis. There's a lot of guys in that division. I know a lot of people don't pay attention to the junior flyweights. But there are guys there to potentially keep you active. But instead, these guys chose to fight each other. Something a lot of these fighters nowadays don't like to do. Ivan's a warrior, man. I mean, the Iron yeah. Boy is a warrior. Okay, he's only got six knockouts. But this, this freaking kid, man, he's got some heart. He's got some bolas. Because he's like, you know what? I got dropped in the second round. I'm getting old, like you said. You know, the wheels are getting a little rusty. Uh, you know, I got caught, but I was able to dominate. There are some questions there. Some fight fans are saying, okay, he may be at the end of the days or maybe coming close to the days of ending his career. You know, but instead of maybe cruising off into the sunset and, and being this undefeated fighter and not facing the best, he said, you know what? <clears throat> Let's put it all on the line. Give me the hardest puncher out there. Oh, this guy, the Mexican dude, I, I like Mexican food. Bring him to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love it. You know, this is what champions do. Oh, that guy, he's another champion in my division. They say he's, he could beat me. Let's do it. <laughs> well, here we go, man. One of the best in the world right here in the uh, flightweight division. Ivan, you know, we were talking about you a little earlier, and we were, we were applauding you because 
to me, you're taking a fight that really, honestly, you could have just avoided and not get in the mix with. But I'm saying, wow, man, the Iron Boy is really showing he's made out of iron by getting in with a with a puncher and Guerrero Gasteca like that. Why why that why that choice? I mean, you're pound for pound best. You could finish your career without fighting this cat right now. Yeah, but I want to show the people that I'm the best fighter. They don't mind that I, I don't got no power punch. I just want to show the people that box, a boxer could be a puncher. And and I and I need to fight somebody with a good name. He got a name, and everybody in Puerto Rico wanted me to see me unified in title. You know, I mean, when you, the last time, I mean, not the last time, but it seems like you've been having this really bad uh, aura of getting Harry. head bumps. You know, you've yeah. been getting these headbutts, you know. Uh, you had it with Hugo Caras. Uh, 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 you had it with uh, Milo twice. And, and it just seems like you haven't been able to get those rounds in. Are you a little bit concerned? And, and is that maybe one of the reasons why you got dropped in the second round in your last fight is because you haven't had that time of getting the rounds to compel? I don't know. I believe that he got me good with a right hand and moving. And when he hit me, he didn't hit me with a good power punch. He just put his hand through, and I was just walking to right to his right hand, and I just felt but he didn't hurt me in, in, in that moment. He just called me. Um, he just called me good. Where Where does your style? Uh, where did it first develop? Uh, you're just a, to be a, a pure boxer. I always enjoy watching you fight. Uh, it may not end in a knockout, but it's always going to be uh, interesting to watch. Just the way you're able to control a guy. Like your last fight, you got knocked down, you got up, dusted yourself off, and just boxed your way to victory. Uh, were you always that way? Did it, how long did it take to develop that? Uh, I believe when I started boxing, my first like first six fight pro, I was not. I didn't even have the style. I just like to do what I used to like. My nickname, Iron Man, and when I had my first cut in my eye, that's why I decided that I say I, I know how to box. Why I, I don't? I don't gotta keep on doing this kind of fight toe to toe, so I'm gonna start using my boxing. That's when I started using my boxing and I started seeing that people was getting too much trouble fighting with me that way. So I decided to stay that way. Uh, in, in Segura, you've got a guy that's pretty much your polar opposite. You're a pure boxer, he's pretty much a pure brawler. Um, what do you see when you look at him? Do, do you even look at tapes when you're studying an opponent? And uh, not really, but and and this kind of like they was talking about this for a long time, and I was and I one day I just saw the fight, and I saw him fight like twice, and when I saw him fight, I saw a lot of things that I could uh, that I could know I could do good in that fight. I know he's a good puncher, he's, he he hit hard, but he's a fighter that he just keep on throwing crazy punches, and he and he gets tired from the fourth round down. The guy like that, it's, he almost reminds me a little bit of like uh, Ricardo Mayorga. You know, he's relentless, right. throws from odd angles. Is it hard to prepare for a guy like that? No, no, not really. You just got to prepare physical and and do a lot of uh, work in the in the in the street for for the air. If you got air to fight twelve rounds going down, you don't get tired. You're not gonna have no kind of problem with this kind of fighters. Hey, well, I, let me ask you this. Is, is this more to you, uh, you know, I'm the boxer, I'm facing not another boxer, but a, a, more of a street brawler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because, like, people always say that, like, I don't have the power punch, that they think that every time I'm going to fight a fighter and they got a record, like, 20 with 18 knockouts, they always see me like I'm I'm, the, I, I'm gonna have trouble with that kind of person, and I always say, why are you gonna hate? Why you can't see? What do you do? Do you do you work the body, or do you just stay composed and let them slip to tire out by punches? That that's the one. I just let him throw everything that he got and trying to don't lose the round, you know. But I'm gonna just let him throw, make make him miss a lot. And then from the fourth round down, keep on putting pressure and putting him to walk back and getting all crazy on top of me. Because I know those kind of people, he always throw punch, uh, power punches. And when you throw a lot of power punches and you don't hit, you don't hit your opponent, you, you, you throw in all the way your energy. And that's the way he always, the, the day he lost, the first fight he lost, that, that was the way he lost. He got tired, he, and when he gets tired, he, he don't got nothing to do. You know, he just stand up and wait for the people to just throw punches at him. Really interesting. This matchup here, I completely 
I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked up about it. I can't wait for you guys to step into the ring and, and really mix it up. But, Giovanni, what are you seeing about Calderon right now that you think you can take advantage of? Are, are you looking at him, 35 years old, I'm the younger buck, I can take advantage of the boxer? Everything, you know, but, I mean, so far, uh, uh, I'm thankful with God. You know, he gave me this gift, the power, and I'm, I'm learning. I'm still in the process, and I'm learning, and um, just anxious to get there. So... When when you when you look at overall and, and you know and you're blessed and you've only had 12 amateur uh, fights to back you up and now you're getting in with one of the best you know junior fight flyweights right now to date. Do you go in with a you, do you try to go in with a, with a, a strategic plan you know Giovanni or do you go in with this day? I gotta land. I have to cut this ring off and I gotta land because this is the only way I'm gonna be successful. You know what? I don't. I can't tell you exactly what kind of style I have because I don't consider I even have a style. You know, I like I said, I just <laughs> try to do as best I can. You know, I, I try to box a little bit. I try to do everything I could. You know, uh, I just go with the flow. I go um, how the the fighter takes me, how how the fighter gets her. But once I, that that bell rings. You make sure I, I make sure there's gonna be a fight in the ring. I, I just love love as a fan. I I um pressure myself to be an exciting fighter who everybody wants to watch who I want to watch myself. I like to watch my 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 videos and say, oh that was a good fight. I did a good job. So I pressure myself to be an exciting fighter. You know to 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 be in this place. I'm I'm curious with a guy like him uh with, with Calderon who's going to be moving. Uh, do you have to do anything different? Is is it a matter of you just making? Every second of every moment count. You know whether you hit him on the shoulder or the elbow. You just gotta kind of beat him down until you get him to stop moving so much. Um, there's there's two two styles. It's a, a boxer versus a puncher. There's no secrets of my game plan. There's no secrets of his game plan. His game plan is gonna be move around and not get any punch. My game plan is to go for the hunt. My game plan is to mm. go to hunt, for the hunt. So there's only one solution for me. It's be in my top of shape and make sure I'm going to throw as many punches as I can. Make sure I'm going to have those legs to follow him. And it's going to be like Tommy Jerry, you know, just chasing and running. And, and <laughs> I'm ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Jerry, that's hilarious. You have an interesting background. Uh, some of the readers or listeners might not, might not know it. Um, you, you tell us a little bit of how you how you first came to love boxing and then how you first got into boxing. Well, we know he likes cartoons. That's for one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're gonna see a cartoon in, in real life now. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Many people don't know that uh, my background. You know, I I came. You know, following the the American dream when I was 20. My parents um used to live already in LA. Um. I was getting out of school already. I was um, finishing my, my high school in Mexico. And um, so I told my parents, so what's next? She, and they were like, well, come over here. You'll be working. You're in an age that um, you may get out of control, you know, especially um, in Guerrero, where I'm from. It's a tough neighborhood over there. You see all kinds of violence, all kinds of stuff, you know. I still love my country. I still love my place. I, don't, I, I will never forget them. But um, when I got here, I came, uh, you know, with the game plan of be, being a better man, working, finding a better life. And um, I always watched boxing, never had the, the chance to train. So I get here, and um, I, I walked to the gym, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm starting making uh, amateur fights, um, fighting uh, the weight class of 118, 117 without losing weight and knocking people out, you know, and, and give them 10 pounds of advantage because I wanted to fight. I would tell my trainer, I want to fight him. I don't care. He has so many fights. I don't care. I'll just fight him. Who cares? Four or three rounds. Fighting with gloves, with headgear, for me, was like, wow, this is fun, you know. I'm coming from a rough neighborhood with, you get down with fist fights, you know. There's no cowards over there. There's no, no backing up. So I was like, wow, and then you get paid for this. This is crazy. I was shocked. I'm like, damn, this is... And I would see people get nervous, like, oh, I'm going to do sparring. What do you think about this? I'm like, man, go there. What's wrong? You're not going to die. Nothing's going to happen to you. You know, for <laughs> me, it was it was another world. I was like, wow, you know? 